Hi, today I'll be showing you how to use the Mahon Ceremony Helper software. Um, this software is to help you manage your funerals, weddings, uh, ceremonies, and you can add um, a knowledge base in there for rituals that you're doing too. Uh, the application itself is just there to help you manage what you're doing. Uh, it tallies uh, your expenses, it gives you reports. Uh, you don't necessarily have to use this software to help with just the Hmong ceremonies. Uh, you, if you're doing a, a, a Christian wedding, uh, it could be a Muslim, Jewish uh, wedding, it, it, it doesn't matter. Um, all it does is it just helps you manage your um, ceremonies. So for example, this is the login screen here. Once you uh, download the application, you get into the login screen, screen here. And I'll show you something real quick here. There's a readme file that you're going to see when you download the software. Uh, there's actually three uh, files that you'll see. You'll see the application itself, the readme file, and there'll be a node image.gif. So for example, you're going to get this file here, that one, and that one there. Um, you want to put that no image.gif file right onto your C drive. The application will look for that file. Okay, it, uh, this is the application itself, and this is the readme file. So I'll minimize that, and I'll go here to the readme file. There's a few things you're going to need to run the software. Uh, first thing you're going to need is the application, of course, and you want to install uh, Microsoft Access 2010. Or if you don't have the Microsoft Access Suite, you can download the Access 2000 runtime. And I, I place a link inside the readme file here. You can follow that link to Microsoft's website and download the runtime. Uh, I believe the runtime is free, so you don't have to actually go out and buy Microsoft Access 2010. Um, so if you don't have it, download it from here, and you should be able to run the application. Uh, place the image onto your C drive and launch the application and pretty much you're good to go. Uh, there is another tip here. For example, I'll minimize this and see if I go open my folder here. What you might want to do is wherever you put the application on your computer or network, um, you want to create a folder that says images or it could be labeled anything. Uh, it could be labeled documents if you like and this is the place where you can put all your images in there. So it makes it simpler when you decide, uh, do decide to move the database off of the computer onto another computer for example. So you have all your image stored in here and you can move the entire folder or all the files to a different computer or uh, network location. Okay, so I'll start off the application here. First thing you'll see is you'll see the login screen. Uh, we're going to log in here, and the default username is admin, and the password is just one, two, three, four. So I'll type that in there one, two, three, four, and I'll log in. When you log into the application, this is what they call the dashboard. The main dashboard here, you'll see that there's a few tabs up here. And then, uh, for example, this first tab here is the alerts and pending tab. You have the my tasks, you have the funeral alerts, uh, wedding alerts, and these are quick views. So quick view meaning that you can edit and modify and update these as well. Um, they're actually pulling from these are the tabs over here and instead of going to each tab over here like for example the my task, the funeral tab, the wedding tab and see all the alerts that you have created uh, right off the bat you get to see the list of alerts that are pending here so you get a quick look at all of these and you can update them if you need to. It gives you a count towards the bottom too. You can uh, update each individual task here uh, uh, funeral alerts and wedding alerts by clicking these buttons down here. Okay, now I'm going to log off of the application and I want to show you something else here. On the login screen, you'll see that there's a few tables down here. Now, what these tables show you are the uh, active funerals. For example, this here shows you that you have two active funerals and the database labels them by numbers. So these numbers are kind of unique and special. So they're highlighted red there. So for example, you have this first one here. It's ID number three. And this particular funeral is active. and is for Yuna Renelli Tao. And you see that there's another active funeral that I created also. It's 
uh, ID number four, and it's labeled as Becky Tao. Okay, so on the right hand side here, I have two acting weddings that I created. Uh, these are all just samples. So there's ID number one and ID number two. ID number one shows you Henry and Becky. And another active uh, wedding is ID number two here. So Joma and Becky. Okay. So here, you, these tables gives you a quick view of the uh, the active uh, funerals and weddings that you have inside the database. Uh, once the wedding or funeral is done, you can click on inactive and they'll be removed from this list here that doesn't mean that all your information that you input it for those particular items are gone they're just saved inside the database and not listed as active okay so uh, you also see towards the bottom here you have these two buttons down here you have the launch funeral guest mode and launch wedding guest mode Okay, so I'll, if I click on launch funeral guest mode, it's going to ask me for one of these IDs here. Okay, so I'll launch the uh, funeral guest mode here, and I'm going to pick number three here. Okay, so I'll launch funeral guest mode, and it's going to ask me what, for which funeral do I want to open in guest mode. So I'll pick number three, and it'll open the number three funeral. Okay, so this funeral is for Yuna Tao. And in guest mode, what the guest gets to do is they can sign in and let's say I'll just put in some info here. They can sign in and say, ah, oh, this is a cousin and let's call her Kelly and say her name is Kelly Tao and let's put um, a phone number here for her just and then we'll put in an email for her. Okay, and then an the address, we'll just put in some address in here. Let's say Westmore Lane, Fresno, Cal, 93701, and so forth. And money type, uh, you can choose from the drop down here. There's a few categories that you can pick. Um, these categories, and just about every single category and drop down list here, you can add or remove these later on. Okay, so if you log into the application and you go to the admin site, and I'll show you that later on, you can change these, you can add whatever you like in here. The application is very versatile, so that it allows you to add and remove these menus here. Okay, so relationship is the same thing, you can remove these or these are just the defaults that I placed in there for your convenience um, donation type let's leave it as uh, you know let's change it to sunshine money and for the amount let's say she donated fifty dollars and donation details now you can set this up on a, a computer station where your guests can actually manually fill in all this themselves or you can put this on a touch screen base or you can just have one of your uh, family member manually input these in. It, it doesn't matter. It's, it's going to be totally up to you. But the guest mode pretty much restrict uh, the user to just making inputs and maybe printing some uh, funerals, brochures, and letters. Uh, other than that, uh, they can't see all the other information such as um, maybe your finance and stuff. And we'll, we'll, we'll touch base on that later on. So donation, let's say you know they can put a message, or you can do it. So um, let's say um, love you always, and I'll click done here. Okay, so I'll click refresh here, and you'll see that Kelly Tao is a cousin from Fresno, donated some uh, sunshine money. Okay, so in the Mon culture, it's a, di a little different. Depends on how they interpret it as sunshine money or money uh, that are donated okay so I'll refresh here again and you can uh, broadcast this on a projector onto a screen or uh, against a wall for your guests to see also uh, but they'll, they'll see these but they won't see the actual amounts so it kind of gives credit where credit uh, credits due to those that help you um, with donation, it, could, it it doesn't have to be money. It could be, um, you know, uh, a, a gift, flowers. It, it it doesn't matter. It helps you track what they are, so that uh, your family knows what you guys are 
what's coming in and what you have on hand. So I'll close that. Now in guest mode you can also print the funeral sign-in sheet. This is a manual sheet that uh, for example if people are just giving you donations or uh, etc. Uh, you can fill this in and type it in later. Okay, or you can have someone manually uh, uh, write these in as it comes in and then um, give it back to you where you can input it into the database later. And then you can click on the print brochures and letters also. Now in guest mode you won't be able to print the invitation letters. Uh, the invitation letter is only if you log into the application. Uh, what you are able to print is the notification letter and the guest, if you have a printer installed, the guest can print this and sell. Notification letter is pretty much uh, a letter for their employer or maybe a school that needs uh, the information about um, or why they are absent or out of work that particular day. Okay, so this is the notification letter. And all these fields here, all this information is automatically generated. Uh, for example, it says right here, uh, this letter is to inform you that on 8-16-2017, our beloved unit, Renal Litao, has passed it away. Now, all of this is uh, generated from the data that I haven't inputted already. So, for example, the service info, all that is automatically pulled into this particular report here. Uh, all this information here, you don't need to type it up, uh, you already input that into the database already. Okay, now you need help with this, you can go into the help button here and it shows you where these information are pulled from. For, for example, this particular date here, this is the date of death and the name, these are pulled from the main funeral view uh, in the death info tab. I'll show you where that's at. <clears throat> you can also print the uh, brochure. Now the brochure is designed to be on a single paper, a sheet of paper on the front and the back. So the cover is this one right here. <clears throat> and it pulls the picture, okay, and it pulls their date of birth, the, the date that they pass on, uh, the service info, all that on. So this is the cover here, and you will fold it in the middle here like a little brochure. Okay, so you can print this out, put it back in your printer, and print the inside of the brochure. Okay, so this is the inside of the brochure here. And every single printer is a little bit different, so you might want to test it on a few sheets first to see which way will work and um, make sure it comes out the way you like it. Okay, so you will fold it in the middle here. And on the left hand side, it gives you a list of the family. And then on the right hand side here, it gives you a farewell message. Uh, this is something that you input into the database. Okay. So you could print your own brochure out. Uh, you don't necessarily need to go out and uh, have someone do it. Um, the thing is, if, if you don't want to print on white paper, <clears throat> you can get your own designer paper, and you can print it this information onto your designer printer also. So I'll close out of here. I'll close out of here. Okay. So this is the guest mode. Um, the guest mode for the uh, wedding is very similar to the funeral also. So I'll click here where it says log in to application. And I'll go back into the uh, wedding guest mode here. So uh, I'll pick a wedding here. I'll just say wedding number one. And this right here, if you're not too sure what wedding uh, you want, that's why you have these tables on the login screen here. <clears throat> so this is the uh, wedding guest mode here and it's very similar. It has a wedding manual um, <clears throat> blank sheet that you can uh, guest sign in sheet that you can print out. Okay. And you have letters and brochures and very uh, very similar to the funeral side uh, guest mode. Uh, you, you, the guest mode doesn't allow the user to print the invitation letter. So this is something that's restricted to uh, user that can log into the application but they can print the notification letters 
and they can print brochures as well so this is the wedding brochure it looks a little bit different where it includes like for example you have the groom and the uh, bride here okay so Henry Tao and Becky Nelly wedding day 417 uh, 2018 and you have the service info here so this is the front of the brochure this is the back of the brochure now close out of that this is the inside of the brochure here where you have on the left hand side here you have let me click here so you can see it there you have the um, friends and families in their position okay so for example it'll, it'll, if you uh, list all of the in individual it'll give you the option to um, allow what you want to print and filter out what you don't want to print also okay and then it gives you your blessing over here okay and it gives you a countdown here okay and usually what it gives you is it gives you the person's name uh, their relationship and their position in the wedding okay all the one that doesn't have the positions are just either uh, family members or friends that you want to include on this list here okay so I'll close that out here. I'll close here, and I'm gonna go go uh, to back to the login screen. So I'll click login to application. And I'm gonna log into the application. So I'll choose admin. You can type it in, or you can choose it from the drop down list. It's up to you. Uh, password default is one two three four. If you do forget what the default password is, you can click on this little link here that you'll see throughout the application. It'll say about application info and detail. And if you look here right there where it says default login is admin and the password is 1234. So this tells you, it gives you a reminder if you do forget, uh, uh, you can't log in. You can change that password later also. So I'll click login here. So we're back to the main dashboard here. After we logged in and it tells you the, the current login. So you can have multiple logins. You can create as many login users as you like here. Okay, you can log off using this button here. Okay, and from here, the main dashboard, you can launch the funeral guest mode here and also the uh, wedding guest mode as well here. Okay, now once in a while, while you're inputting information, setting alerts, and etc., what you want to do is you want to click on this refresh list here. And what that does is that refresh all the information on the list here and throughout here for you to view. Okay, so uh, once again, the alerts and pending tab gives you a quick view of the alerts that you, you have created in the My Tasks, My Funeral Alerts, and the Wedding Alerts. Okay, so I'll go to the, first, uh, the second tab here, which is the My Task tab. The My Task tab is an area where you are allowed to make or create uh, tasks and it'll alert you. So, for example, I'll click on Add New Task here and you get this form here. It automatically drops the date and the time. Okay, these are automatically captured and it captures the user. So if you have more than one user here uh, inside the application, uh, each of you can create different tasks and it, it'll, it'll kind of tell you and organize it to where um, it tells you who created that task for whom. Okay, so for, for example, I'll create a new task here and I'll say, um, me to let's say purchase some uh, chips for guests okay and I'll sign it to now you don't have to create uh, individual users for the assigned users okay assign means you're assigning this to somebody you can just manually type it in so for example I'll assign it to Lily which is not on my user list but I'm gonna assign it to Lily okay and task date, you can choose from the menu, uh, the little calendar here. Let's say we'll do it for tomorrow. Okay. And task time, you could pick a time. Um, let's say we we could type a time in there. We'll say uh, 12 p.m. or something like that. Okay. Then we'll go to update. Now update is once this particular user, uh, the, this task uh, has been updated. There's more info. Let's say uh, Lily went out and bought the chips. Then we'll put it here. For now, we'll leave it as pending, and we'll leave the update blank. Completed date, we'll leave that blank. Uh, you don't necessarily have to use everything in this 
this form here you know uh, you can just use maybe the update and the task and the sign um, uh, the pinning and completed this is kind of critical so you have to choose this uh, this is gonna be based on the list so we'll, we'll, we'll say it's done here okay now that 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 new uh, task I just created if I refresh the list here and I'll go back to my task there you'll see that that new task ends up right here okay so created that date oh that uh, the task date is that assign it to Lily okay the assigned date was today okay and capture user was me as the admin and this is the info right there that I input it and the system automatically assigned that particular task as task number 11 okay so if I want to update this task let's say Lily went out um, she she bought the chips and I want to update that I could click on update penny tasks here now click on well, what task ID well, it was number 11 so you'll pull up the info again and here you can make changes here or you can uh, update it and say okay Lily bought the chips so we'll say bought chips to done and you can change the status to complete it and hit done okay so this particular task right here task 11 is done if I refresh the list here and go back to my task tab you see that that is removed from my pending list here okay now you see that some of the uh, pending lists here actually most of these are because they're old tasks that I created but the date here is highlighted in red okay now uh, the reason for that is that past due tasks will be highlighted in red so if the date is today or prior and it's going to highlight and draw your attention to it that um, this particular task needs your attention because it's past due. Okay, it's either due today or uh, the day before, and etc. Okay, so you can also search by user pending also. So if I search for let's say admin, okay, all the um, tasks that's been assigned to the admin here will pull up. Okay. So these are all pending ones, so you can see that they're pending here, and I have seven tasks there. Okay, and you can pan through it by using this navigational bar down here, and it tells you six to seven or seven to seven. Okay, uh, let's search for Lily. Okay, so Lily has one task: buy some drinks here, which is also on my. Um, List pending list here as well. You can view all tasks. Okay, so these are all the tasks that you have, even including all the completed as well. Okay, and let's go to more command. Now, in the more command, it gives you some similar uh, view. Uh, it does give you the same view as on the task uh, field uh, on the main dashboard, but it gives you a lot more commands. You know, you can add a task, some brand new task view all the tasks, search the task by ID, uh, open pending task by user, task report, view all, so for example this is the task report right here and you can print this out. Uh, to print this report out when you have the report open like this you hit the control and the P key on your keyboard and you can choose it from your printer and click OK to print it. Okay. So this is the report and I'll go to the end of the report using the navigational button down here and I'll give, always give you a count here I have 11 tasks count okay um, you can uh, print uh, different reports so this is the task reports view all you have the task report by user including all tasks uh, you have a by user and assigned a date so you can kind of query and say you know I only want all the tasks from uh, this particular date to this particular date uh, let's say uh, uh, January 1st to January 31st so forth okay so you can kind of filter it that way per um, by month or so forth uh, you can do it by week and so forth that's what the dates are for so it asks you for a beginning date and an end date uh, you could do uh, my task by status so if you want all the pendings only or uh, you want all the completed
Okay, so let's say we want all the completed, well, let's say pending. So we'll type in pending. So these are all the pending lists here. Okay. And I'll go here. Okay. So it pulls out, I'm logging as admin. So I'm the admin and all my tasks that are pending. Okay. Uh, very similarly, you can email a user that. So for example, if you're assigning all all these uh, creating all these tasks for individuals let's say uh, for the funeral or uh, a wedding and um, you want to email them well you can click on this email button here okay and it'll ask you for well which particular user and let's say uh, I'll type in admin okay now make sure you have Microsoft Outlook installed if you don't you won't be able to use that these are uh, the email option okay okay and what that does is that email is a report uh, and attaches it to uh, an email and you can email that out to the individual so if you have more than one one uh, users that you assign tasks to you can email them the individual uh, pending list that uh, of uh, their particular task that they need to complete for that particular day or for the particular funeral and maybe email them each day or each morning of all the updates that they 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 need to complete okay so you can click refresh list here to refresh the list here as well uh, let's click done so that is the task section is used to create uh, tasks. Uh, tasks can be anywhere from buying uh, things that you need or ordering um, or catering or purchasing something that the funeral or wedding needs and stuff. Okay, so you have those tasks there. Okay, or any other tasks. Okay, so the next tab is the funeral tab. Okay, on the funeral tab here, you see that uh, it has two tables here. Uh, the first table here, it lists uh, the active funerals. Now, if you set it, a funeral, you create a funeral, the funeral is completed, you can set it to uh, inactive and it will get removed from this list here. Okay, so the active funerals will show on this list here and you'll see that uh, I have an ID 3 here for Yuna here. And you'll see there's a, another ID 3 over here for Yuna as well. And on this uh, this table on the right here, it gives you the fund total, how much money you have, and then it gives you the cost total. Okay, so if you look at number four here, we have Becky here. Uh, number four here, you know that her total cost is about thirteen thousand, and then her uh, oh total funds, I'm sorry, thirteen thousand, and uh, cost total is two thousand five hundred here. Okay, so it just gives you a quick view of what where you stand financially. Okay, so uh, let's open one of these and take a look at it here. I'll click on Open Active Funerals, and when you do that, it's going to open up all the active funerals. Okay, and to to set them as inactive is right here. You can set it as inactive, and it'll remove that from the list. Um, all the data is still there. You can still pull this up later. Okay, this is funeral number three okay now when you do open up the active funerals or pretty much any funeral and weddings you have this position meter or uh, listing meter on the left here and this tells you all the people that you have assigned jobs and positions to okay so in this example here I have this list here and if you scroll down you can see that uh, it lists all the people at the position at the top and those that, that are just family members they just sit at the bottom there okay so I have a servers I have a security team I have a Ma. that's for example that's Hmong for a, a cook okay so I have two cooks here and so forth and I have a Juga here okay um, you can refresh the list here okay if you're making inputs over here on the right so this is the funeral right here that I created. Uh, you can add a photo here, and these are just the general details of the the information. The things that are in red here, these are important because it gets put into uh, brochures and um, letters and etc. later on. So if you see 
the uh, field labeled in red, that means that it's important. Um, the database needs that for other areas. Okay, so first tab here inside the funeral is the funeral alert. So these are a little bit different from the task alerts. Okay, the task alerts are general task alerts. Okay, uh, it doesn't really apply to a particular funeral. Um, um, maybe you need to take a phone call, uh, set up an appointment, and so forth. You can create all of that in here as well. So the funeral alerts are just for this particular funeral here for Yuna. Okay, so Yuna's funeral has alerts. The main task alerts in the front are general alerts. Okay, so uh, here task alerts very similar you could create tasks here so you can see I have these tasks that I assigned here and it catches the date and time and user and you can assign it to whoever uh, user you could type their their name in there uh, manually they don't have to be a user okay uh, alert date alert time uh, you can put a, an alert here okay uh, buy a bowl for the funeral or etc. Uh, do the dance emoji and so forth. Um, you could place an update here and you could set it to complete it. You could track it and say, oh, you know what, it's complete on this particular date if you like or not. Uh, open it by a special ID number. Uh, you can open all the pending uh, lists, uh, open all pending. You know, these are all the pendings. I have 11 pending here. Okay, uh, you search by keywords as well. Okay, so for example, if you don't remember, um, if you have hundreds of alerts, and you can search by keywords. Let's say uh, bow here or something like that. So if I click here and I type in bow, you know, it'll pull up anything with the word bow inside the alert task here okay and you'll tell it'll tell you right here it says one one only okay or a name or etc you can view all um viewing all navigate here to the end I have 18 alerts here you know pull up all the completed as well as the pending as well like this here okay so I'll close out of this uh, you can do use the print alert report. It'll print all the alerts into a nice report for you to view. Okay. Close that. Uh, you can email users uh, pending alerts as well. So put in their username and then uh, it'll attach it to an email. Make sure you have Outlook or an email client uh, installed on your computer and set up on your computer. Okay. The application will find it if you set it as your default mail client. Uh, contacts and family. So contacts and family are what pulls into this particular list over here. Okay. So for example, here I'll click on a new contact, and I'm gonna put in a new contact. I'll call it Radio Tau. Put in a phone number here. Uh, cell phone and the more information you input in here uh, the better it is for you later on when say for example you want to uh, email a or not email but um, you want to uh, print out a thank you letter uh, to all of the family members and etc you can you can query out a uh, mailing list and stuff okay so we'll call this uh, Klein Road. We'll put some information in there. Uh, da, 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 and I'll just keep on going here. Relationship. Uh, we'll pick, let's say, aunt. Uh, teacher. Put in some notes if you like. Catch your dates and admin. Uh, there's just button here okay now this is to add to the brochure so this is what I was talking about earlier here where um, if you want this person to appear on your brochure when you print it you'll put a check mark here okay if you don't leave it blank okay position listing 
the uh, participant position. Uh, there's this default um, list here. You can change it to however you like. Uh, for example, we'll, we'll put it uh, a cast to, and this is something that in the traditional Hmong funeral they they, they have something like this. Okay, so uh, you don't have to use these. You can input in your own if you like. Okay, you can remove all of these if you like. Um, I'll show you how to do that later on inside the admin section. Okay, so here we'll close out of this and hit refresh here. And if you want to see it appear on the position listing here, refresh that list and you'll see it here. So you'll see it right there with this gasu. And then I add a radio tell. Okay, so this is your list here. Okay, this shows you what you have here. Okay, if you do, for example, accidentally close out the position listing list here, you can click on this button right here which says open position listing and it will appear again. Okay, now you can also search by the uh, contacts by the ID number, which are these right here. Uh, if you want to take somebody off the brochure, you can just uncheck them here as well if you like. Uh, scroll down to see more here. Okay, uh, search by first name, search by last name, print contact. You could print the contact list. If I click on print contact list here, it'll just print everybody's info here. And then you navigate to the, I have 71 people here. Okay. On this list here. Okay. Uh, you can click on help. Now, help will give you access to the participant listing. Okay. Now, if you, if you don't really know what some of these people are or the, uh, the uh, positions are, um, I added some text here. So, for example, the Gasu that gives you an English. They're called directors in English, and uh, it says these guys direct the family on what is needed, how and when. They are usually one main Gasu and a secondary Gasu. Okay, so it kind of gives you some um, background information on what each of those uh, traditional Hmong. Uh, uh, funeral positions are okay so you can go through those you can delete these as well you can add new ones to it if you like uh, how many type English and the job description and so forth you can make changes to the list as well uh, you'll see this is the table records of it so you can scroll down you can make changes to any of this like for example this one right here is the Cicleng is the flute players okay and the, the, these individuals will be instructed by the gasu when to play the flute uh, usually uh, all night okay so there's these folks uh, these information here you can add a new one uh, you can make changes to these you, you want to delete one of these here for example uh, this one here you can click on this bar here it will highlight the entire row hit the delete key and say yes to delete the record. I'll, I'll hit no here. Okay, so you can delete and modify it. You could print out this whole list here also, and uh, it gives you the whole list here, and you can see all the the information here, and then um, you can give this to somebody, or you could print this out. Okay. So that is the help to get into the position listing. Now, anything that you see here. I uh, want to change, you can do it inside the admin side also, and I'll show you that later on. Okay, uh, down towards the right hand side, uh, right hand corner here is the print letters and brochures. So, uh, it's very similar to the guest mode here. You can print letters, invitation letters, you can print notification letters, uh, you can print brochures. Okay, uh, you can use your own custom paper. Uh, if you like, you don't need to print it on um, just white paper. You know, you can use designer papers if you like also here. Okay, so I'll hit done here. And we'll go to the next tab here. The next tab is the deaf info tab. Okay, so one of the important fields is the data deaf here. Okay, you will need that. It's, it's labeled in red. That means that it's going to be used somewhere else. Okay, and the service info that prints on the brochure is right here. You can input that in. Uh, funeral chapel or in-home service, you can 
and put that in and uh, it, it doesn't have to just fit this field okay uh, the field is just an input field you can get it a little longer by keep on inputting and using arrows in here to kind of see the entire thing when it gets printed on the brochures and letters and etc and, and and especially the reports it'll be automatically expanded so that you can see all of it okay so uh, for the brochure there, there's one exception is for the brochures uh, if you put too much information the brochure can only hold so much so you, you will have to double check your brochure and make sure that uh, you can cut it down to where it, it all fits on that brochure um, it so only so much can fit on a piece of paper okay um, I'll go to the next tab here the military tab you can check veterans and choose on the branches here uh, accomplishments are things that the deceased here has accomplished uh, you can input that in here as well insurance does this person have life insurance you can input that inf information here as well uh, legal uh, if there's any legal or final arrangements and stuff uh, attorneys uh, executor of, of estate you can put that info here as well Debts. Uh, in the Hmong culture, uh, when a person uh, dies or passes on, uh, their debts must be settled. Okay, now settled doesn't mean necessarily means that the debts are paid in full. Okay, it's just settled where it it it's negotiated to an agreement whether they owe money or uh, someone owes them. Um, to get it settled where you know okay you know what they want to make payments uh, or the family's going to set payments or the family's going to make payments uh, monthly payments uh, to cover those debts okay so <clears throat> that's what this section is for um, you can see here I'll give you an example here like let's say ID number two here okay there, there there's two types of debts okay there's either debt to or debt from Okay, so debt two is where people owe this person. Uh, uh, debt from is where someone owes them. Okay, so make sure you choose the right one. So, for example, this this second one here, uh, capture date, and it's five thousand dollars and twenty four cents here. Now this is O two. Okay, debt two is O two, Kai Tao, and the reason was borrow to pay for a Honda Civic. Okay, so paid info is where you can input in the family will pay for the full amount. Okay, and payment date, you know, you can put a date in there and has it been completed. It's completed. Okay, it doesn't, not necessarily all the status have to be completed. Okay, maybe uh, the family's going to make payments uh, and it's not done yet. Okay, so these are the debts. Okay, so you can input them here. Okay, and towards the bottom here, it'll give you a rundown of all the amounts here. Okay, so for oh, let me go back to the depths there. Okay, so on the left hand side here it says debt from and completed, and then it also has debt from pending that is not done yet, but it's been settled, and then all the debts are t tally up to about seven thousand five hundred and one dollars and three cents. And then you have the debt two here. Okay, these are what the deceased owes. Okay, so debt two uh, completed, paid off eight thousand, and this is just my test numbers here. I uh, it's two hundred million here for the debt pending total amounts, and it tallies all that for you here. Now you can print a report of that if you like. Okay, so I'll click on the reports and it'll tell you the same thing. And this is something that you could print out also. Okay, so then you have finance tab. The finance tab is your cost. Okay, so there's two things involved here um, there's funds and costs. So, funds here, the funds column is money that you have on hand. Okay, so for example, your family can. Uh, start to um, uh, gather your funds from uh, fam family members, fundraisers, and etc., and start inputting them in here. So, for example, like 
Lily gave five thousand. Sang gave a thousand. Henry five thousand. Uh, Alex nine million. And Kai is、uh, has is costs. Okay, so funds are what you have, and costs is what you're spending. Okay, so as you're getting funds and as you are spending, it'll tally it down here for you where you have all the funds, completed funds. Uh, and then funds that are pending. Now, pending funds meaning that, for example, is six thousand dollars here. Okay. Now, what that tells you is that that tells you that someone says maybe they're going to give you six thousand dollar, but they haven't yet. Okay. So it's suspected there. That's why it's pending. You don't have it on hand yet. Okay. So I'll click refresh here to see those numbers again. <coughs> okay. So it gives you a tally of all the funds and all the costs, and then it will. You can、uh, the the blue numbers here will give you all the funds minus all the costs. Now in accounting, if you see the parentheses here, okay, parentheses are negative numbers, okay.、Uh, positive numbers don't have parentheses. This is in accounting, okay. It doesn't really show you the negative number. Click in there and you'll see the negative number, but Um, in a county, they use the parentheses, so、uh, I opted to keep the parentheses there. Okay, so for example, if we look at this list up here,、uh, you can add new ones by clicking on this little、uh, icon here with the little yellow star. It'll take you to the bottom where, let's say,、uh, a person,、uh, let's say,、uh, radio, <coughs> radio, Tao came and said, you know what, today. Uh, I need,、uh, let's say, not funds. Didn't give me any money, but the cost. Let's say he says,、uh, I need two hundred dollars for,、uh, let's say, a, a car rental. Okay. And the company is, let's say,、uh, JJ Car Rental. Okay. And the reason is for a car to. Uh, let's say transport.、Um, let's say、uh, flowers. Okay. So that's what you will input in. Did receive. You can leave this blank until you get it, and it's pending because it's not hasn't been done yet. But it tells you that okay, you gave two hundred dollars to Radio Tao, and this is for accountability later on, where you know if there are questions or concern where we have this much fun. And where did they all go? So it shows you a breakdown of all the costs and what、uh, you have spent your money on. Okay. So here, if I click refresh here, it'll refresh the list, and that two hundred two hundred dollar that Radio Tao here has requested for the car rental. Okay, that's a cost. It ends up on this side. Okay. So if you can print up the、uh, print financial report. It'll give you a breakdown of everything, and it allows you to print this also. And this is what that that new one that I just inputted, Radio Tao, requested on this date, two hundred dollar. So it gives everybody, especially family members,、uh, when you、uh, have a joint um, uh, uh, organized uh, funeral for、uh, a family member, it breaks down all the funds and. Uh, all the costs, and it tells you where you stand visually, right here, where you stand, right here. Okay, so print the print the financial report here, and you can also print a blank blank sheet also.、Uh, the blank sheet is just to where you know if if you don't have access to a computer or to the database at hand, you can jot down all the requests because you're gonna have people coming.、Uh, You know, at you from multiple directions and say, you know what, we need this, we need that. So you can just jot down that information here, and then bring it back and input that that into the software later, and that's fine as well. Okay. So the next tab here is the guest donation tab. So、uh, inside the guest mode,、uh, this is where very similar to that where、um, it, it tells you the you know, the relationship, the person. Fill out all their information because you can use this later on, okay? Where you can、uh, 
um, filter out. Maybe you just want all the guests from Fresno or all the guests from California, uh, all the guests who donated certain types of money or funding, um, and send them a thank you letter, uh, appreciation letter, and so forth. Okay, so you can query that later. So that's why the more information you input in, the better it is that. Uh, for you when you do decide to do something else with that information okay so uh, to add a new one you can click here on the uh, little arrow here with the asterisk and you can add a new one if you like here input that in tab over here so you can see the other fields okay you could print a uh, report here as well so this is the report It'll go to all the way to the end, and it'll give you a tally of all the money, all the sunshine money, and it'll give you a total of all the uh, sunshine money and the uh, money tally. Now, all the other items values are, for example, any other items such as like gift. You could put a value on those as well, flowers, um, gifts, uh, clothing, etc. You could put a value on those as well, and they'll get tallied separately. Okay. And we'll close that. There's a more command fund here. You can blank up, uh, print a blank guest uh, sign-in sheet as well here. You can also export all of your uh, guest information to an Excel file. Also, okay. <clears throat> uh, done here. And the reason for the Excel file so that you can create a mail merge and and print up all these informations uh, for example all of your guest names and address and you can put that uh, print that on a, uh, a label uh, label sheets so you can uh, mail letters out uh, and etc okay so it gives you that uh, that that wonderful opportunity here to export your entire guest list for this particular funeral here okay Click on done. We'll go to documents here. Now documents is an area where what you can do is you can add documents in there. So for example, uh, death certificates, uh, birth certificates, uh, let's say, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, funeral information, um, anything else that you want about this particular person, you can attach, uh, scan it into your computer, click on attach, and then you can view it so you can view the image as well so you can view all these images as well here okay oops that's the wrong one there I'm missing a picture there okay so you can do that there um, you can add I don't know uh, uh, death certificates and etc here driver's license uh, insurance documentation here as well okay farewell Farewell is a message that you can uh, input in here, and you can use the scroll buttons here to see the rest of this particular message here. Now, this right here, if you click on this button here, add to brochure, you can you you will add that to the brochure. Okay, now you can have more than mess uh, one messages, but uh, make sure you only have one that's added to the brochure because space is limited. Okay, so I could use the scroll button here, and I can add a a new message here, uh, different messages here. Okay, now if you add more than one message, only use one for the brochure. All of the other one will print be printed with the full uh, funeral portfolio. So, for example, all of these tabs here and all this information that you input it on the different tabs and on the main sheet here, when you print the full funeral portfolio, it will print everything that you have inputted. Okay, and it takes a while to generate, and this is the main, uh, the uh, full funeral report here. Okay, so for example, it gives you a rundown. This funeral is for Yuna. Okay, born on this date, passed on that date, and everything that you have in there. You know, death information, uh, accomplishments, insurance information, legal debts. Uh, gives you all the counts and tallies, finance. Uh, Yes, and donations uh, gives you pretty much everything else in there. So this is something where the full portfolio is where uh, for immediate family members you can print that. 
Now I'm going to go all the way to the end of the report here. So all that info that we inputted, you all placed it in here. And the farewell message is the last one that gets to be placed there. You know, if I scroll back a little bit, you can see the those are the alerts there. Let me go back a little bit to see the. I want to show you the uh, document. Go back a little bit more here. And there you go. So this is something that you will see for the documents that you input it. It gives you the information, the documents, and then it shows you a small screenshot of what the document looks like. Okay. So when you scan those documents as images, save them inside that user um, that user uh, that that uh, image uh, folder that you created before. Okay. So that's a full funeral. Uh, uh, portfolio report is up here on the upper left hand corner here you click on that and it will print everything for this particular funeral here okay and that's what it will look like okay so I'll close out of that uh, make sure you click on refresh here to kind of refresh the screen here for all the info once you start inputting stuff now if you want to navigate to another funeral you can use these buttons down here now you'll see that this funeral is for you, not here. If I go to the next funeral, it's, it, I have two that's active. So if I click here, I'll go to the next one. Okay. And this one is for Becky. Okay. And it shows all of Becky's information and all the tab will show all of the info that I inputted for Becky as well. Now on the funeral listing here, you need to refresh that as well. So these are the, the, the position listing that I have for Becky here okay so I have two active funerals if I set uh, Becky to inactive and I'll close out of here to save it and if I go back to open active only you'll see that I only have one on one now okay or there's no more funeral you see that this is a brand new funeral right here I don't have any more funeral I only have one active one okay so if you go if you refresh here you'll see that the funeral active funeral is four, number four ID number four and it's Becky's name here. If you refresh the list, she'll be removed from that list there. See that? So if we want that back, okay, we can go here and uh, go to view all funerals, or you can go to more command, okay, and we'll navigate. We have Becky there. There's one more that I have here. <coughs> Excuse me. This is for spot, okay, and this set is inactive. So if I go back to back to Becky's, I can set it back to active, close out of here, and go back to open active funerals. And you see I have one or two now. Okay, so this is for Una. And then the second funeral that's still active is for Becky. And you'll see Becky's information here. Refresh the list here, and you'll see this is the position listing that I have okay so uh, you can navigate it if you set it to uh, inactive it means that the funeral is completed uh, you don't you don't expect to put any more information for that particular funeral you can always reopen that just go to view all funerals or you can go to the more commands and you can print out the uh, uh, full portfolio reports by ID uh, you can print out blank costs and uh, tracking sheets here these are the blank ones uh, you can print these you can export them contacts and uh, export the guest list uh, by funeral ID to Excel etc here also uh, gives you a bunch more you can search also search by first name uh, you can search the funerals, you can search the funeral guests. Um, if you're not sure where the funeral is, let's say you have hundreds of funerals in here. Uh, you can search it by social security number, you can search by date of death, uh, a query by the dates added, uh, or query by dates uh, of death. Search by the first name, last name, and etc. Okay, uh, you can always view all the funerals and find the, the person that you're looking for as well. Okay. And I believe I have three funerals that I input it here. Right. This is the ID number five is for spot. Refresh the list here, and I only have like two individuals.
for the positions here. Okay, so that's the funeral uh, side of it. I'll go to the next tab, which is the wedding tab. The wedding tab is very similar. Open all weddings. You see that I have two active weddings here. Okay, I have one for Henry and Becky, and then one for Joma and Becky here. Okay, so let's go to uh, open active weddings. And it's very similar to the funerals. You know, here you can put in pictures for uh, Henry and Becky. Okay, and to do that, you go into the groom and you can add a photo here. Okay. Click on attach photo. You can go to the bride and you can attach the photos here and put in the bride's information, groom's information, uh, create your alerts. Uh, it has wedding info. Okay, this gets put on your brochure. Uh, contacts and family, and you'll see the position listing on this side. Refresh that to see it. So you have your best man, dressers, uh, flower girls, junior bridesmaid, uh, marriage license witness, uh, make gong, uh, servers, you have photographers. Okay, so you have all of that over there. You can add your contacts here. Uh, you can go to schedule. Okay, schedule is something that is a list that you can uh, actually create to kind of schedule things and say, okay, this is going to happen on this particular day at this particular time and you see that uh, all the red means that it's done so you, if you check it off here that means it's done so it draws your attention to okay I still need this, these other ones that are not done yet so when you as you're done with that you can check it off okay scroll down to see more okay so you can search by keyword search by user you can print by dates email this email all to individuals who want to know what the scheduling is okay you can have services now services are businesses that for example you have floral shops you have catering shops uh, that you want to input in here and you can uh, pull up their information quickly uh, input them in here okay you have legal status for uh, things such as uh, beneficiary powers of attorney prenups uh, you can input that all in here and you can print that too okay or email it out okay so you have legal information here and for legal usually you have legal witnesses that will sign the form also so for example if I click on let's say print all for signing okay it's gonna print all of my legal items that I have chosen okay and it's gonna put it into a format where you can have the groom and bride and witnesses sign Okay, so I'll close out of that. And for example, if you add a new one, you'll see where it says right here where you know the legal item. There's a drop down list, and you have like child support, blood tests, bank accounts, auto insurance, governor uh, benefits, uh, inheritance rights, um, life insurance, and stuff. You can put all that info here. Okay, uh, prenups and etc. Also. And then you have the finance tab. Now finance you know, is very similar to the funeral. You have the funds and costs. So this is how much you have on hand. And then this the cost is what you're spending. Okay. So as it comes, you can start uh, analyzing that and putting that there. So and then the bottom here it tells you where you stand, all your funds and all your costs. You could print a finance report here. And let's go to the end here so you can see the tallies here. Okay. Let me stretch this window here a little bit so you can see that. Okay, so you have the funds and cost, and it gives you a tally down here. You could print a blank sheet as well if you're not going to be at the computer, and you can input it, write it down, or input it in here, and then bring it back and put it into the database to help you tally everything. Guests and donations, very similar. Uh, if they're doing gifts and stuff, you can choose it here as well, okay, uh, from the donation types here, okay, food, beverage, gift, flowers, and etc. You have songs tab. The songs tab is where you can add a song, and for example here, you can put a link there, and when you click on this link, it will open it up, like I have some samples here that I put up for like uh, YouTube accounts, uh, my local machine as well so you can put that here as long as you have an internet connection you can click on these links and they'll open these songs and play these songs so you can have this <coughs> oh excuse me you can have this open um, 
maybe during the um, the celebration time, and you can play these particular songs as well. Okay, it'll play right off your your computer if you have speakers and uh, internet connection. If you have it online like this, okay. Blessings, blessings are informations that you can add in here, and it'll get printed on your brochure. You can add it to the brochure or not. You have multiple uh, blessings. Uh, just make sure you have one added to the brochure only. Space is limited there. Registry. So if you set up registries for your uh, wedding, if you're planning this particular wedding, um, you can set up registries like on the Amazon, Kohl's, Targets, and etc. And you can put the links here. And I'm not connected to the internet, so my link won't follow through. But it will put the web link here. And you can click on that. You can email this list out. So click on email list. And if you have Outlook uh, set up or an email client set up, you can email this list here to all your guests or family so that they know where to go to uh, see all the uh, uh, gift registries that's been set up. Okay. And then you have uh, documents. Oh, uh, on the registry, if you're not sure what registries are, uh, gift registries, um, companies have these where you can go up and um, set up a registry account where they're usually free, where you can kind of pick stuff that you want as gifts. So it tells your guests, uh, it gives your guests an idea of what you want instead of uh, your guests just having to guess and getting you something that you might not like or not need. So, you know, for example, if you need all the kitchen items, you can go and click on pots and pans and uh, spoons, dishes, and uh, silverware and stuff. And uh, when your guest goes to, like, to the Target registry here, they'll see all the stuff that you pick, and they can pick something from that list, and then shows the other guests that that's, uh, someone purchased that item already so that uh, the, all the other items that you will like, uh, whatever's left, is what you really want or need. And... Um, your guests can pick the other items instead of just giving you like a blender when you already have a blender. Uh, so that, that that's what the registries are for, uh, gift registries. So you know, instead of getting uh, five blenders from five guests, you know, you only get one blender from one one guest, and all your guests can go to the like, for example, the Target registry and see that. Oh, okay, someone got um, let's say um, Becky a blender already. You know, she likes these other stuff so that you know you don't get five blenders you know okay so th those are what registries are for uh, so you can add that list here and email that to everybody the link of uh, all your registries that you set up okay uh, so I'll go back to the uh, documents here now documents is very similar uh, you can add uh, marriage certificates and stuff attach the file uh, scan the file and put it on your machine and then click on attach file and you can view it <clears throat> and you can view the the files as well okay and you can print a report as well of those uh, you can print the report of the registry now there's something very unique here and I'll go back to the uh, wedding info here okay now the wedding day is very important so for example that's this that day right here if I change that to like let's say this weekend okay click on refresh here <clears throat> You see that on the main sheet here, it has a countdown here. Okay, so it tells you the countdown is four days to the wedding date. Okay, which is Saturday, April twenty-first, two thousand eighteen. Okay, so it, that countdown really helps you if you're planning a wedding to see how many days uh, to the wedding day you have left. So uh, this is very useful if you use this to plan your own wedding or plan. A friend's wedding or a family family member's wedding. It gives you the day. Okay, how many more days? Okay, so uh, you, you know if you want to plan the services, you know finance, uh, songs and blessings and scheduling. You know it gives you a good idea of when uh, the big day is coming. Okay, so um, on the main sheet here, you also have the wedding types. Uh, you can put some information here. Uh, wedding preference and modern Hmong, traditional Hmong, Muslim, Jewish, Christian, Mormon, and etc. Uh, this gets printed on to your brochure, so it gives uh, friends and family an idea of what type of wedding you're planning. Uh, okay, and active and inactive up here. 
So I'll go ahead and close out of this here. Oh, uh, I'll print the uh, full uh, wedding portfolio also. The full report is uh, generated. It pulls all the information that you have inputted as well. Okay, so all the information that you place into the database here gets gets pulled and sent you know, into a big report here. And this report is the wedding for Henry and Becky Rinaldi. And it just adds everything in there. All the groom information, all the bride information, uh, pretty much everything that you had input in here. All the guest information, all the positions, you know, uh, servers, and etc. Bridesmaid, all that information gets pulled here. All your songs, everything gets pulled. All the legal stuff gets pulled into this big report here. So this report pretty much gives you all the information that you have okay now I'll close out of this here and to uh, one more thing to print reports when you have the report open you want to hit the control and P key on your your uh, keyboard to and then you can choose a printer whichever printer you want and print it out okay if you have a PDF printer installed on your machine you could just print it to your machine and then email it out if you like Okay, so this is the wedding module here. I'll go ahead and close out of that. And I'll go to the contacts. Now contacts are, uh, for example, you have the funeral contacts. If you open the funeral side, you have the funeral contacts and families. Okay. And then on the wedding side, is very similar. You have the uh, families for the contacts and family. Okay, so in the contacts uh, tab here, that just kind of wraps everything into one spot where it says these are all your funeral contact listing and these are all your wedding contact list. So, for example, maybe you're looking for a particular person, you can use these commands here. So, for example, uh, add to F contact, you can uh, open the F contact more command, you can search by city, by position, maybe their occupation, uh, their state. You can print a report. Maybe you want to report all the person by a particular last name. Maybe you want all the Taos or all the Moors, etc. So you can print those. Okay. Or you can print all the contacts. Okay. You can export the contacts to Excel. You could, uh, maybe you only want all the contacts from a particular funeral. Or you can export those only by the funeral ID number. Okay, so once you get it to an Excel file, you can do a mail merge and um, print labels, often like address labels with their name and their address only. Uh, you can do all that and mail merge. Same thing with the wedding contacts, uh, more commands. You could print it, you can search by occupation. Maybe you want all the cooks or all the police officers or all the doctors. Um, by position, maybe you only want all the, all the bridesmaids. Uh, information search by city so let's say I'll search by city I'll click on search by city here and I'll say Fresno so these are all the individuals that are from Fresno here okay now 13 okay uh, you can let's say print report by last name let's say I only want all the towels so this is all wedding contacts these are only for all towels and these are all the towels and if I click on the last page, that's 74. Okay. Okay. So these are all the towels. Um, you can export them to Excel as well. And uh, I'll close out of this here. So that's the contact tab. Let's go to among ritual tabs here. On the rit rituals tab here, this is like a knowledge base. Okay, so here I have some simple stuff that I input it here. Like for example, ID number five here. Uh, ritual name is Katowin for the deceased. Now uh, it gives you a little description here. It says, uh, you know, on the night before the deceased is to be buried, all of the deceased's sons, daughters, grandkids, sons and daughters, in-laws, and everyone who is considered children must catow for the deceased to receive blessings and good luck. Okay, so it has a bunch here. Uh, you can add to this list. You can add a new one. Uh, you can add your own rituals and customs in here. You can remove these as well. Okay, uh, you can go to view all. You can go to open and uh, like for example that one that I was 
referring to number five there for cataloging. Uh, you can see it here. Okay, you could change it. Um, you can search. Maybe you don't remember. You can search by keywords. Uh, you can search by a username. You can do a date range. Uh, you can print it. You can email it. Uh, it's up to you. There's a lot of options here. You can delete these as well. Okay, so that's the knowledge base. It gives you an area where you can uh, put in information that you might not use daily, uh, and it gives you something to reference to when you do need it. Okay, and then the last tab is the admin tab. The admin tab, uh, the login, the default login is just administrator. Password, default password is one two three four. Now inside the admin side, uh, you get to change pretty much everything on the concerning the tables and records okay so for example if I go to the funeral section here I can open up the main funeral table and I can look through all the data here okay and you can kind of sort through it too like for example if I go to let's say the first name here okay if you click on it you can sort it you now you can alphabetize it you know it's up to you um, you can close this. You can search if you pick the uh, let's say phone number. You can you can search, put something in the search bar here, and it'll highlight the one that um, looks like it. Um, you can change it. You can delete it. To delete it, just highlight the whole line. Click on the delete key in your keyboard, or you can highlight everything if you want. Delete it. Delete it all if you like. Okay. Um, you can go into the drop down lists, for example, like uh, uh, if I go to the, the funeral city list, you can add to it. Okay, so you got like Fresno, Clovis, Sanger, you can add to it like um, Fort Seals or something like that. Okay, uh, let's see, Fort Benning something like that okay so you can add anything you like to it uh, on on the drop down list okay so those drop down list for example uh, I added to that funeral city for binning if I exit out of the admin section let me go back to the funeral side here <coughs> okay well you go back here the funeral city uh, city often see that I just added for binning to that drop down list so any of these lists here you can change and you can add like for example the states you can add all the states in the the US if you like okay you can add the 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 ethnic group you can add different ones to it if you like okay religion very same thing you can add to this list if you like okay country same thing you can add to that list okay you don't even need um it to be on this list you can just manually type it in here if you like okay like for example the, on the city here it, it doesn't have to be on the list you can just type uh, let's say uh, I'll just San Francisco or something oops something like that okay it doesn't have to be on the list you could just manually type it in okay so go back to the admin side here so administrator default password one two three four okay so you can change all of those lists um, all the tables are a little darker text and bold text wedding same thing contacts same thing knowledge base you can open up the knowledge base tables and you can pretty much change everything you like in here okay uh, inside the admin controls tab here there is an option here for example if you have more than one user who's making changes and updating information there is an auditing change log the auditing change log tells you for example I changed it inside the table record city I changed it Clovis to San Francisco okay so it does track changes inside the application and modifications okay so that's one thing you want to do. Uh, the application is free um, for personal use. Uh, for commercial use, it's not free. Uh, you can use uh, for personal use. You can use this as long as you like. You don't need to register it. The only thing that if you want to register, you can click on the register button here. 
and you can put in a password. Uh, you can get this from us. We'll email it to you if you want to register it. And you put your special code in there. And all that does is this right here. If you want to register it, for example, if I go into the weddings tab here, when you print out reports, say like if I print a report about, let's say the songs report, okay. <clears throat> See, that information that's stamped on the report there, th th when you register it, um, you just get to put whatever you want down there, like your name or your family name. Uh, down on the reports. That's all it is. The, the application is a full version of the application. Uh, you don't necessarily have to register it, but if you want to register it and you want to help support us, um, you can do that. For example, uh, let me go to like the lettering. Let's say I print a notification letter here. See that that information right there? That's that registration information on the bottom of the report. You get to put your name and your your family name and your info here instead of ours okay so that's what that's what the, the uh, difference is when you register the application to just using the free version okay so it is the full version the free version is the full version um, there's no uh, restriction to this use that as uh, as long as it's just for personal use okay uh, for the admin controls uh, let me go back in there default password one two three four okay so those are the controls here uh, you can do a recovery password you can change all the usernames by clicking here also create more users login user you can create more admin users as well okay uh, here you'll see like for example if I want to create a new user here I'll say uh, admin user I'll call it uh, let's say Lily and password is one two three four let's see and password text this is just a reminder so if she does forget I don't necessarily have to reset this password here I can just put it here so okay you know original password or something like that you don't need to fill this in at all the password text the password field is required though okay so I created this new user Lily and password is 1234 so she can log in too okay so done done and I'll log off here and if you go back here you'll see that the login screen you'll see that Lily gets added here see that and then when she logs in all the data inputs that she puts right here is this current user Lily well when she starts making inputs it, it's gonna track her okay that she made certain inputs she started a, a new task you see that right there it says it captures Lily okay uh, she goes into the wedding module uh, the funeral module and she she creates an alert or she uh, as a, a new contact, then it'll track it'll track her uh, data inputs, and then she can filter it out later. Okay, so that that's all that is to it. And you see down here towards the bottom where it says application register to. If you register the application, then this would change to whatever information that you provide us with, and we'll add that here. Okay, and to register, you can click on this also. Uh, about application info and detail and click on register now okay okay so that's it for the software um, in the updated uh, version uh, version 2.4 it has both of the funeral and wedding modules uh, on the version 1 uh, it, it only has the funeral module so the new version if you have if you're running the old version of uh, version 1 um, it, it just has the funeral version, but for version 2, uh, 2.4 and above, it has both module. Actually, every single module is active here with some changes. Okay. So other than that, uh, this is the application. Uh, in the next training, I'll go over the wedding and the funeral uh, modules more in detail. Uh, if you have any questions, just send us an email or... Um, if you have some um, things that you want it, us to add into it, you know, let us know. You know, if we have time, we'll we'll add those onto the uh, updated versions as well. Um, other than that, thanks for attending the training, and I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, the main thing about this application is is there to help you uh, manage your funerals and weddings, and I hope you it really helped you guys out. Okay, have a good day. Bye bye.